Hello, I'm Tom Rouse and welcome to another Wolves update on my channel. Please drop a like and subscribe if you've watched a couple of my videos and you've enjoyed them. There's going to be lots of more regular updates on the goings on at the club through pre-season and then beyond into the next season. So to start off with, former Wolves manager Kenny Jackett has been appointed the manager of Portsmouth and he's set to raid Wolves for a couple of players, James Henry being one of them and also there have been rumours that Jack Price perhaps will be leaving. The two of them of course are key parts of Jackett's team that won League One in 2014 but they've also been good members of the team over the last couple of years as well uh, but with Wolves looking to progress I think they'll be, they won't be missed. But I particularly enjoy Jack Price. I think he's been a great player for us in midfield. But the fact that he's been sort of left out under certain managers for long periods of time suggests that perhaps he doesn't put in the work off the field as much as some of the other midfielders, perhaps. Another player that looks like he could be moving on is Jed Wallace. He's been on loan for the last year at Millwall. Uh, he did was quite successful there in the team, of course, that won promotion through the playoffs. But there's a deal in place there, and he's. I imagine that he'll be in a good position to further his career there. He's still very young and in a team that will be battling down the bottom end of the championship, you'd expect him to thrive somewhat. But also I think Millwall are a team that are feared by lots of clubs and they'll take lots of points off teams. It also looks like Ethan Ebanks Landell will be moving on. He's been on loan at Sheffield United this season and has done very, very well as well in a team that won the division. Wolves have withdrawn their 1.5 million bid for Andy Vyman, which was in place under Paul Lambert. He wasn't really... It's a difficult one because I think that he had potential had he been playing, played up front by himself. But he's played out on the wing quite a lot and he wasn't really used the way that he should have been. I think he's a good striker. He probably would have got 10 goals for us over the next season if we'd have signed him. But we need to be looking at somebody who's going to score 20 or 30 goals next season to lead the line for us because we haven't had anybody like that for quite some time now. I'll always remember his goal against Liverpool. I think it was a great breakaway goal and the way he rounded the goalkeeper as well. So cool and collected. A couple of times as well he showed glimpses of his potential but we need to be pushing on. We need to be looking for a little bit more. He would have been a good squad player, but we're looking to trim the squad down and increase the quality. And he's not quite what we're looking for, I don't think. In terms of coming in, Roderick Miranda, who I talked about a couple of weeks ago about coming in, is a big centre-back, six foot three centre-back, who's worked with Nuno in the past. He's still rumoured to be coming in. He's close to an agreement, and it's expected to be within the next couple of weeks there that a deal will be in place. Also, interestingly, now I'm not sure what to think about this one, and I think it's a quite a long shot, but... Andy Lonergan has talked about leaving Wolves. He wants to move back to the northwest to Preston or to somewhere up there. And because of Nuno's past, we've been linked with uh, Ika Casillas, who was his goalkeeper at Porto last season. However, the odds are 25 to 1, and there's teams like Liverpool who are looking around and Chelsea for a backup goalkeeper and things like that. So I think it's a very, very long shot, but it would be. It, it's sort of shown the, the journey that we've had now that, that we've been linked with goalkeepers like. Casillas rather than Lonergan and perhaps there's something there but I very very much doubt it. In terms of pre-season the schedule is now full. Uh, we're going on the tour to Austria at the, in mid-July. The 12th of July is the first game against Werder Bremen. Then they play Victoria Pilsen uh, on the 15th and then Jablonek on the 18th. So teams who are quite you know they've played in the Champions League recently so they're a much tougher opposition that we've usually faced. If you think about our tours over the last couple of years, we've gone to Ireland and to Australia, and we haven't really had a challenge in pre-season. And I think this is a good challenge for us. It's not such a challenge that we're going to get battered in every game, but hopefully we've got a squad by that point where we'll have three good competitive matches out there in Austria. The last game against Jablonek is taking place at the Sportplatz Kematen in Tyrol which is one of the most picturesque grounds you will ever see. It's absolutely stunning. So I think there'll be some interest from Wolves fans to go to that game in particular. Then following on from those three games, they're coming back home for three more games in the two weeks leading up to the season. They've got Shrewsbury and Peterborough away before having Leicester City at home, which is the glamour tie. But yeah, I think it's... I think it's a much better looking pre-season than, than what we usually have. We know we've played teams like Crewe, Chesterfield. We've got some real challenges in there and a good variation of teams as well. And hopefully 
if we can beat Shrewsbury and Peterborough and build up towards a good home win against Leicester, I think we can head into the season on a high. We're still awaiting news on the new kit. I said a couple of weeks ago I was expecting it to be announced at the end of season dinner, but it wasn't. It's going to be released alongside the new website, which is expected to come in the next week or so. I'm not there's no bit there hasn't been a date set for it, but hopefully it'll be soon. Whether it's been delayed because they're trying to get rid of the money shop agreement, I think. But from what I've read from various sources, that's an agreement that's been put in place and will be with us for this season at least. We've also got two players who are going to be taking part in the Under-21s European Championship and that is Courtney Hawes and Dominic Iorfa. Courtney Hawes, I can understand his inclusion in the squad. He's had a great season and particularly the game against Chelsea, against really top-class opposition. He had a really towering game. But also his consistency through the second half of the season, I think, improved and he was one of our top players of the season, I think. I think he was pretty much overlooked when it came to the Player of the Season awards, but his improvement and his consistency, I think, was one of the best in the squad. However, Dominic Iorfa, who has barely seen any action at all since Christmas, I think his inclusion is a little bit of a shock, or perhaps we're not seeing something, or Paul Lambert didn't see something in him, that the um, England setup have seen. When it was announced by Wolves that Paul Lambert was moving on, it, Dominic Iorfa liked the Instagram post, which is a little bit awkward, but also Paul Gladden did as well, so it's a bit of a strange one. Perhaps Paul Gladden is our 20 or 30 goal a season man that we're looking for. Just just don't know. Uh, it's also been reported that Derby are interested in signing in Dominic Iorfa if their bid for Andre Wisdom falls through. They're reported to be looking at Iorfa for about £4 million which I would take at the moment. I think he's a player who has not quite reached his potential over the last 12 months. He showed fantastic ambition and talent and speed and pace in the first two seasons, or first season and a half at Wolves. But the lack of effort that he's put in this season has been really evident in the games that he's played. We don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Perhaps there'd been a falling out with Lambert. Perhaps there'd been a disagreement about style or his position or anything like that we don't really know I would like Tim to stay he's, he's still a very very young player with lots of potential and if he's been included in the England under 21 setup still that must mean that there's some some talent there and hopefully he can build on that next season with this new regime compared to last week there's been it's been a bit quieter at the Wolves with Nuno settling into his job probably doing a lot of scouting watching the old games from last season I wonder if he's doing what Solbakken did when he first came in, which was watch every game from our doomed Premier League season. I wonder if he's doing that. Uh, God help him if he is. So it's going to be a bit really busy next couple of weeks. There's bit still lots of signings being rumoured. I don't know if anybody's watched the last couple of Tim Spears videos, but you could see the start of the what looks like he's going to be the new big screens at the Molyneux as well, which is an exciting prospect. The pitch has all been dug up, ready for a new pitch to be set down, ready for August as well. Lots of exciting bits of news coming out of the club, and hopefully there'll be a bit more at the same time next week. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for the support of the channel. The last couple of videos really, really, really were amazing, the support that they got. So thank you very much for that, and I hope you've enjoyed this one. And subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming up over the next few weeks as we come up to the pre-season matches. And of course the transfer window which opens on the 1st of July. But thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.